What is up YouTube? We're finally gonna make the Facebook pixel easy to understand. And unlike all the other YouTubers out there, I'm not gonna tell you it's just a tiny piece of code because that's about as useful as Donald Trump's comb. Now, the pixel is one of the easiest things in the world to understand if it's explained properly, and it's something that you absolutely have to have if you're doing any sort of advertising on the internet, or if you get any traffic to your website, you're gonna be able to use this to make a lot more money. So if you stick around to the end of the video, I promise you this will be the best video you've ever seen on the pixel. You're gonna understand it on a deeper level than you ever have before, and you're gonna learn a little bit about how Mr. T is gonna help you make more money. But first, do me a favor and smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and comment below because we're gonna pick one person who does just that and we're gonna give them a free advertising course. We're gonna pull something out of our vault, out of our three or four best courses, and we're gonna give away a free copy to you if you're selected randomly from everyone who likes this video and subscribes down below. Now, I don't know about you, but when I search YouTube for what is a Facebook pixel? How do you install the Facebook pixel? How do you use it properly to track? How do you figure out custom conversions? I usually see something like this. It's a small piece of code, and this is how I react. Don't you ever say that. Hearing the word code gives me acute anxiety, and I start having a panic attack because I am not a technical person, and I don't know anything about code. I really don't understand how these numbers and letters on the screen turn into real things for us. So I am completely oblivious when it comes to code, but I love advertising and I love tracking it properly and making money. So I have to understand the Facebook pixel. And so let's break this down. So if you're out there and you're watching, you're thinking, okay, I kind of get what it is. I kind of get it. It's a pixel. It sounds like it's from a Disney movie or something, but I know I have to use it for advertising. Let's break it down so you actually understand on a deep level and you're comfortable with it. You can be nice and relaxed with your advertising and start making more money. So let's take a look at online advertising, right? Here's a Facebook ad, and this is a storefront. So if you're in a Shopify store, or it's your webinar, or it's your landing page to get leads, whatever it is, we can all agree that we have an ad here, somebody clicks through that ad, and they land in the store, right? Now, this is analogous to real life. Let's take a look at this diagram. This is a sign spinner. We've all seen sign spinners out on the street. They spin this around, they get your attention, and they get you to go into the store. So here we have a coffee shop. Now, can we all agree that this is basically the same setup? A Facebook ad going to an online store or a sign spinner going to an offline store, what we call real life. Can we all agree that that's basically the same thing? Just one is online and one is offline. So let's say that you own this coffee shop and you hire this sign spinner. He's the best sign spinner ever. He says he's gonna bring you so many customers and you give him $50 and you're like, okay, give me $50 worth of sign spinning today. I wanna to bring in more customers and see what happens. I'm gonna give this thing a shot because I've heard good things. And you pay him the money, he goes out there, he spins the sign and you walk up to him at the end of the day and you go, awesome dude, thanks for spinning the sign. What kind of results did I get? How many customers did you bring me? He's gonna go, bro, it's not my job to watch the people who are going inside your store. I'm out here to spin the sign. And you're like, well, I don't even know if it was worth paying you $50. Like, I don't even know if we had more traffic in the store than we usually have. I don't know if the people that you brought in actually bought anything or if they came in there and shoplifted. And he's like, dude, not my problem, okay? And he's basically not gonna help you at all. Now this is Facebook. You'll pay, pay Facebook $50 to run your ad. Guess what they'll do? They'll spin the sign. They'll show it to a bunch of people, but they don't care if you got results or not. They don't care if more people bought coffee inside your store or if more people bought from you on Shopify or attended your webinar. They really do not care at all, okay? You don't mean anything to them. So this sign spinner, he has so many clients, he can go out there, get another client. He doesn't care if you're happy or not. But if you wanna keep bringing in customers, you have to figure out, okay, is this sign spinner bringing me customers? And that's what we gotta do with Facebook ads. Is it worth it to spend money? If I spend 50 bucks on this, I'm gonna get $100 back out so that I can multiply my money. So we're gonna do something crazy. We're gonna go out there and we're gonna hire Mr. T to stand outside our store. And uh, Mr. T's out of work, you know, he was popular decades ago, but he doesn't have much going on now. So you're gonna be like, Mr. T, can you watch this sign spinner? See how many customers he brings into the store and tell me at the end of the day, okay? Just stand outside the shop, keep those eyes peeled and tell me how many new customers I get, okay? And so now the sign spinner spins the sign, you give him 50 bucks. Mr. T's watching the whole day, he's standing out there, nothing gets by him. He'll say, you know, you had 50 people 
see that sign and then come in the store. I could tell that they were gonna walk by, but they came in because they saw that sign. And so Mr. T now is telling you that you got 50 new people from that sign spinner. And how do you know this? How do you know you got 50 people? Because Mr. T told you, okay? Remember that. Now the Facebook pixel is Mr. T. The Facebook pixel is this little guy that you hire to watch your store and tell you how many people came from this ad. So you might have 200 visits to your website today, but how many of them came from the ad? And the Facebook pixel, just like Mr. T, can tell you 50 of those website visits came from this advertisement. Now all of a sudden we've started to track our ads, okay? We've started to track how many people actually made it inside the store. Because this sign spinner, he might be able to tell you like, yeah, I saw some people walk towards the store. That's like Facebook will tell you that you got clicks, but did they actually go in the store and buy? Only Mr. T is watching for those things. Only the Facebook pixel is watching for these things, not Facebook itself, okay? It's just this piece of thing that we're gonna put on your website, which we'll talk about in a second. But so Mr. T told you how many people go in the store, but you might start thinking to yourself, okay, well, I don't just want people to go in the store. You know, I want uh, people that are gonna buy things and I want people that are gonna buy a lot of things. And so that's what we call a conversion. A conversion is when somebody sees your ad or they see the sign spinner and they take the action you want them to take. Whether that is register for your webinar, buy something from your store or become a lead, okay? And so the next day we're gonna go to Mr. T and we're gonna say, you know what, Mr. T, I wanna know more than just who came to my website. I wanna know what they actually did when they're inside the store. And he's gonna be like, all right, well, what specifically do you want to know? Okay, what do you wanna know if people are doing? And you're gonna say, I wanna know if they bought coffee. I wanna know how long they stayed on the website. I wanna know if they got anything to eat. I don't know how much money they spent. The Facebook pixel can do all of this for us if we tell it to watch out for these things. So just like we gotta tell Mr. T, we gotta give him clear instructions we also have to tell the Facebook pixel what we wanna track. So he might say, how do I know if, uh, you know, Mr. T in this scenario, he's not that smart. He's gonna say, how do I know if they bought anything? We're gonna tell him, well, they went up to the cash register. And he's gonna say, where's the cash register? And we're gonna go, it's that countertop right over there. And if they go up to the cash register and hand us money, that's a conversion. And I want you to mark that down in your notebook as somebody bought coffee from us. So the Facebook pixel, it's the same thing, only we're gonna use website URLs. So let's say that we have a thank you page for our product. Let's say we sell socks on the internet and our URL is thebestsocks.com slash socks. That's our sales page. After somebody buys, they go to thebestsocks.com slash thank you. Do you see how that's a unique URL, thebestsocks.com slash thank you. All we have to do is tell Facebook, when somebody goes to thebestsocks.com slash thank you, tell me that they bought from me. Just like we tell Mr. T, when they go to that counter over there, tell them, tell me that they bought coffee because that's what just happened. But they need explained, okay? Mr. T needs you to explain to him what that means when somebody buys, as does the Facebook pixel, okay? So all we have to do is give the Facebook platform instructions. When somebody does this, tell us it's a conversion, okay? So we wanna to define to our own conversions based on what the goal of our advertising campaign is. It could be to get new leads, could be to get sales, could be to visit a website, to visit a web page, okay? Uh, but once we know that people are converting, we can also use something called custom audiences to retarget people. So let me show you what this looks like, okay? We're gonna say, all right, Mr. T, awesome. You told me how many people went in the store, you told me how many people bought coffee, how many people bought food, you have more room in that notebook of yours? And he's gonna say, yeah, I can handle whatever you throw at me. So we're gonna say, all right, Mr. T, when people come back out of the store, I want you to get their contact information and I want you to put it down in this notebook so that we can mail them flyers to come back into the store and buy more coffee, okay? But remember, we have to tell him that we want to track the people. And he might say, do you want me to get everybody's contact information? And we might say, no, we don't really care about children. We don't care about people that didn't buy anything. We really just wanna gather the information of the people that actually purchased coffee. So if you see somebody purchase coffee, I want you to write down their information. And so he knows what that looks like. So again, just like we had that URL, thebestsocks.com slash thank you, we can create an audience and say, create a new audience Facebook pixel out of everybody who visited thebestsocks.com slash thank you and it will start gathering that data. It's gonna start making that list in the notebook of all those people, and all of a sudden, the next time we go to run an ad, the next time we go to the sign spinner, we can say like, only show this sign to people that Mr. T wrote down as purchasers. 
because we know those are the people that are going to spend money. Everybody else is just wasting our time. They just like to look at the art on our walls inside the coffee shop. So again, we can go to Facebook and we can say, all right, we want to sell more socks, but only to people who already bought socks. Or we want to sell more socks, but only to people who got to the order form and then backed out. So Mr. T might write down people that walked up to the counter, looked at the menu, but didn't order anything. We can say, write those people down, because all we gotta do is give them a phone call and say, hey, I saw you checked out our menu. Do you have any questions? Do you wanna come back and order? So same thing on Facebook. If we define the behavior of our customer, of our visitors, we can tell Facebook which audiences to create. Now, some great audiences to create are just anybody who came to your website, okay? So all website visitors is a great custom audience to have to advertise to. Those are people that already walked into the store. We can also create people, again, who went to check out but didn't actually buy anything. They abandoned the cart. We want to create an audience out of that. And then we definitely want to create an audience out of people who already purchased, okay? Because they're going to be great to market to in the future. And we can also tell this guy, like, hey, don't worry about showing to pe this sign to people that purchased today because they usually don't buy coffee more than once per month, we'll wait till tomorrow. So we can exclude those from our audiences. So do you see how the Facebook pixel is just like a guy with a lot of intensity standing outside your coffee shop, tracking whatever you tell him to track, but you have to tell him what to track. Otherwise, he's just gonna stand there observing and uh, he'll give you some data, but he's not gonna give you specifics, okay? So the first thing we have to do is install our pixel. That's just like hiring Mr. T. Until we call him up and hire him, uh, he's not gonna be watching the store. So if we run ads, if we run the sign spinner without him, guess what? We're not tracking anything. So before you set up an ad, even if you're not gonna spend money on ads for months, you wanna install the pixel right now because the pixel will start gathering information for you so that when you are ready to run ads, you already have that data. You can already uh, advertise to the audiences you want and use that data to get much better results and make a lot more money, which I know we all want to do when it comes to advertising. So now we have to actually install the pixel. This is what intimidates people, but it's very, very simple. So let's jump in and install the pixel now. All right, here we are inside a brand new ad account so that you can see how this works from scratch. Okay. We're just gonna go up here, we're in our business manager, and if you don't have a business manager already, just go to business.facebook.com and sign up there. Now that we are in our business manager, we're gonna go up to ads manager up here in the top left, and we're gonna go over to pixels under events manager. We're gonna click on pixels, and we're gonna hit create a pixel. Pretty easy, right? Now we wanna name our pixel according to our business. So we're gonna use our Facebook pixel for one specific purpose. So if you run a, a sock business and a lawn mowing business, you wanna have different ad accounts for each of those businesses. You wanna have different pixels for each of those businesses. Okay, Mr. T is not gonna watch the customers from both. He's an expert in those sock customers and not in the other business. So we wanna have a different person watching for each type of business that we have or a different pixel for each business that we have. So if you have two totally different products or businesses or you have one webinar funnel and you have one physical products funnel, use a different pixel, okay? Just open up two ad accounts and then grab a pixel from each one. So here's our first pixel and this is for my sock business. So I'm just gonna name it sock business, easy enough, right? And then I hit continue. Now, Facebook is going to create a pixel for me, okay? Again, I don't know anything about code. I'm just gonna click this middle button right here. It says manually add pixel code to website. I'm gonna click on that and then see this thing that is just foreign to me, stresses me out looking at it. I'm just gonna click on it once. It's gonna turn green. That means it's on my clipboard. Now I can go over to my website and install this and I'll show you how to do that in just one second. But first, if we wanted to email this, if we have a web guy or something, uh, we could email this to our web guy. So we could just click email this and then enter his email address right here. And uh, that's gonna send it over so that we don't have to worry about it, right? So I could send this to somebody on my team and have them do it for me. So right now I just copied the pixel. If you can copy paste on a computer, you can install a pixel. So I copied it, let's go install it, okay? Let's jump over now. All right, we are in ClickFunnels right now, which if you use ClickFunnels, we'll run through that real quick. If you have WordPress, we'll run through that as well. So we just wanna open up our funnel. We're just gonna open up our funnel. We're gonna go over to settings and you can see the head tracking code right here. 
So if you have a new funnel, this will be empty for you. So I have Google Tag Manager in here right now. Don't worry about what that is. You do not need that if you're just starting out. And I'm just gonna delete that. And then all I'm gonna do is do Command V and paste in that tracking code. Do you see that? So I will scroll down to the bottom. I'll save and update. And the pixel is now installed in my funnel. So if I wanna run ads to this funnel, the pixel is right there. All right, now we're gonna install our pixel on WordPress. If you don't have ClickFunnels, you have a regular website, chances are that it's on WordPress, okay? If not, you just need to post this copy paste thing in the header of your website. But if you have WordPress, you can get a plugin called header and footer scripts. And we're just gonna come down to settings after we install this. So first we'll go to plugins, add new, it's called header and footer scripts. We're gonna come down to settings, go to header and footer scripts, and you can see right here, I already have Facebook Pixel in my header because I've already installed it. And so you will have nothing here, and all you do again is Command V, paste it in there, and hit save. And guess what? You have just installed your Pixel. Isn't that awesome? Next, we want to check and make sure we actually have our Pixel installed, right? We thought we set it up, but we wanna make sure it's working. So it's like we called up Mr. T on the phone, we hired him to watch our store. Is he actually there? Let's drive by the store and see if he's watching. So we're just gonna go to our website, whatever we just installed the Pixel on, and uh, then we are going to install a Chrome plugin called the Facebook Pixel Helper. The Facebook Pixel Helper is like uh, asking your friend to go drive by your coffee shop, see if Mr. T is standing outside. That's all it does. That's the only thing it does. And so we're gonna go to the Facebook Pixel Helper on Chrome and install this in our browser. I'll put a link to that below the video. All you gotta do is click that link. Uh, it'll open up a page that looks just like this. Hit install and then you're done, okay? Then we're gonna go back to your website. So type in your website URL in your browser. And then we're gonna come up here to this little icon that looks like this. And you can see this is a Facebook Pixel Helper. It is blue right here. And then it's got this green square. Now this isn't gonna be green if you don't have any pixels installed, okay? But I'm gonna click on this and this is telling me that I have two pixels installed. So that's perfect. Uh, if you have zero installed and you think you just installed a pixel, turns out Mr. T didn't show up for work so you have to rehire somebody, okay? That just means you have to go back and make sure you pasted that piece of text. I don't even wanna call it code because that's just gonna confuse you. There's nothing about it that needs to equal code to you. So just go back and paste that in and uh, then we're gonna come back and check and make sure it's active. And if it is, we have installed our Facebook pixel code. All right, so we are live. And again, if you go to your site, it should look like that. It's got a, a green square and that means it's live. Now, what else might we wanna do with this? We might wanna set up custom audiences and conversions, right? We might wanna tell Facebook what we wanna actually track. Mr. T is gonna tell us how many people exactly bought coffee from us today after they saw that sign spinner out there so that we know how much money we made from paying that guy 50 bucks because we don't wanna pay him 50 bucks tomorrow if he didn't bring in more than 50 bucks, okay? So create custom conversion. Okay, so I'm just gonna type here again, thebestsocks.com slash thank you. That's where people land after they buy, okay? And I'm gonna name my conversion. We're gonna name it sock buyers. And then under category, let's add it as a purchase, okay? So Facebook knows that's a purchase. So now we have what's called a custom conversion, which means we told them what we want them to track and we're tracking sock buyers we're gonna create, okay? So we've created that conversion, but let's not stop there. Let's say, um, let's say that not that many people buy socks from us. A lot of people come to the landing page, uh, but fewer buy socks. So we might also want to track people who got to the order form, right? So again, we're just gonna type in our URL, thebestsocks.com slash order dash form or whatever your URL is. And then we can optimize our ads to attract people who get to this order form. The reason we're gonna do it this way instead of buyers is because Facebook typically wants to see 50, that's five zero conversion events in a week to optimize your ads for any specific conversion. So if only 10 people are buying socks from us every week, but our ads are still profitable, 
then we can't optimize for sock buyers because there's not enough conversions. So we're gonna optimize for people who hit our order form. So just one step back in the funnel where there's gonna be more people, but we're still close to the event that we wanna see. So I now have order form and I also have purchases. So I'm gonna name that sock order form and I'm gonna put add to cart under category, okay? Create. So now we've got custom conversions. Now, how do we get these to show up in our dashboard so that we can see if our ads are working? Let's pop over to Ads Manager. And right here under Columns is how we're gonna tell Mr. T what we want in our report at the end of the day. We're gonna be like, here's what I want you to tell me when I talk to you in my office at the end of the day. So we're gonna tell Facebook Pixel the same thing, okay? So we're gonna go to Customize Columns, and then there's so many different results that we can track in here. Um, we're gonna make sure we add our custom conversions because we just said that those were important to us. So we will just come down to custom conversions. And then right here, you can see we have total, unique, value, cost, unique cost. So you can assign a value to these. You can assign a value to sock buyers. Maybe every sock purchase is $10. So you can include that if you have a value. Right now we don't. So I'm just gonna include total sock buyers and, uh, and I'm gonna include the cost per sock buyer. And then also total, order forms and the cost per order form. So I can know who's getting me close, okay? Now we can also rearrange everything else um, if we want to. So if you know what else you wanna track, you can add it here. I like to track link clicks. So let's go up to link clicks. I usually wanna know my cost per click just to see uh, what ads are getting click throughs. And so I'm gonna do link clicks. And link clicks doesn't include like likes um, and engagement and things like that because I don't really care about likes on my posts. I wanna know who's clicking through. So I'm gonna do unique click, unique link clicks and the uh, link click through rate. And then the really annoying thing is that Facebook adds these all at the bottom. So I usually just pull these up to the top because that's gonna be the first thing it shows me. And I wanna see this right at the beginning without having to scroll over. So, you know, we've got sock buyers, cost per sock buyers. Sock order form, cost for sock order form. So you can see now in our stats, now our ads are gonna come down here and uh, we're gonna see how much we spent to get one person to buy socks, okay? Because again, we're giving the sign spinner 50 bucks no matter what, okay? They're not tracking our purchases, but we, we gotta say like, Mr. T, we spent 50 bucks on the sign spinner. Is he getting us any results? And Mr. T can tell us, well, um, five people bought coffee and they each spent $10 on everything that they bought. And so then we're break even, but we have our, you know, we have our coffee cost, but coffee's pretty cheap. So we know we spent 50 bucks and we made 50 bucks. But the only reason we know that is because we told Mr. T how much we had spent on ads, and then he divided that by how many purchases there were. So he said, well, you spent 50 on ads, and there were five people that bought, so I'm gonna divide that, and that's 10, and it's gonna spit it out. And that's what this dashboard is doing. We're not actually paying Facebook $10 a purchase here, we're paying them $50 to show our ads to a certain amount of people. Um, that's gonna be our impressions over here. That's what we're paying for. Um, but our results that we're tracking, that we're analyzing, are it's just math, right? It's how much we paid divided by the results that we got based on what the pixel is telling us. So let me just show you what this looks like in an ad account with um, ads in it. All right, here we are in one of my accounts and you can see we've actually run ads in here. So you can see, um, you know, this campaign has had 28,364 impressions. That's how many people we got the ad in front of and we spent $181 to do that. That's all Facebook really cares about, right? But I wanna know how many people signed up for my webinar in this campaign. And so this campaign is showing 20 people signed up for my webinar and it's showing that 11 actually watched it. And so now I know that I'm paying on average $16.46 to get somebody to watch my webinar. And depending on how much I convert, I know if that's good or bad, if I wanna keep spending more or if I don't. And I can also track um, purchases in here, right? So I can see over here that five people bought on my website from this campaign right here. So I spent $2,818 right here on this campaign and five people bought, which is about $7,500. So made about five grand on that campaign, right? I spent 2,800, it sounds like a lot, right? But 
Um, at least 7,500 came in from that campaign, and so I know that I want to keep spending money on that, right? Just like uh, I want to keep paying that sign spinner if he's bringing in a lot more money. All right, we're back on Facebook. Let's tell Mr. T whose information to grab, okay? The first thing we're gonna do is create an audience. So I'm gonna create a custom audience right here. Now, if you have a customer list, like an email list, you can also upload your email list and advertise directly to them. That's just like if Mr. T already has a list of your customers from the past 30 days, then he can start calling those people up and see if they wanna come get coffee today, okay? So same thing, you can upload that email list and you can start advertising to it immediately. That's a great place to start. But we also want to track this based on traffic. It's going to update in real time. So if I want uh, to track website visitors, I'm going to type it in right here. Website visitors, 30 days. So everybody who came in the last 30 days, those are going to be really likely to buy. Uh, I can just hit all website visitors here, okay? And then I'm going to create that audience. And then I can also create a lookalike on the audience. Now, a lot of times I'll also create 180 days. So I might create a, everybody who's come to my website in the last 30 days and in the last 180 days, okay? Uh, and then make sure you change the days up here. Now, we wanna track other things too, okay? So we can do people who visited specific web pages in the past 30 days. So let's say that uh, I am in a vacation hotspot and people only come to my coffee shop when they're on vacation, which typically lasts five days, okay? So if I can get them to come in every single morning that are on their vacation, I'm gonna make a lot more money in my business. So what might I do? I might track in the past five days, people who have bought coffee. So in our online store, in our sock store example, this is gonna be people who hit my thank you page, okay? So in the past five days, we wanna track everybody who hit our thank you page because those people have socks on the mind and they are going sock crazy right now and we think that they're gonna order more if we get a really good offer in front of them, okay? I mean, honestly, when people are buying, that's the best time to sell them more stuff. That's when they're ready to buy. So these sock people are ready to buy socks, okay? Maybe it's Christmas time, they gotta give them to all their relatives. So we're gonna track everybody who visited our thank you page in the last five days. So all we have to do is pick people who visited specific web pages past five days and then type in our website, bestsocks.com slash thank you. Remember, that's where people end up. If you don't know where to get this URL from, just go through your funnel and the thank you page, go up in your browser and copy that URL and then paste it in here, okay? And then we can create the audience. And now Facebook's gonna start gathering that data. And then if it has enough, we can also create a lookalike audience, which is just people who are similar to people who already bought socks from me in the last five days, okay? Now you typically need about a thousand people in your audience to make a really good lookalike audience. So if I wanted a great lookalike, I'm not just gonna do a five day audience. I'm gonna create a new audience. And I wanna know people that look like anybody who bought socks from me in the last year. So I'm gonna do 365 days. Let me take that back. I'm gonna do 180 days, cause that's the max. And I'm gonna do people who visited, again, bestsocks.com slash thank you. And now this audience has a much greater chance of getting to a thousand, right? Cause we need a thousand people. I'm gonna say purchasers 180 days as my title. It's really important to properly name these so that you, if you're looking through your audiences, you remember what each audience is. So purchases 180 days, I'm gonna create the audience, okay? So now we've started to create some audiences. There's all sorts of combinations we can create. We can, we can uh, track people who didn't buy from us, people who bought more than once from us. All we have to do is put in that information. So that's it, I hope this helps. This is how the Facebook pixel works. Yes, it's code. I don't understand how code works or what it does or how they actually track these results, okay? I'm not a technical person. I'm not ashamed to admit it. Um, I know some of you out there, if you're watching this video, you're probably not a technical person. But I can tell you that you need Mr. T. You need this guy watching your store and telling you who's coming in, who you should reach back out to, what audiences you should create, um, and what purchases they're making so that you know if you should see, keep spending money on the sign spinner or try a different sign, hire a different sign spinner, whatever it is, the Facebook pixel works the same way, okay? We need to know what results is our ad getting for our business so we know should we spend more money on this ad uh, or should we try something different? Should we try a different sign, okay? So it's exactly the same. Online advertising is exactly the same as offline advertising. It's just a lot easier because it's all automated, okay? Um, we're lucky to grow up in this era where we have such easy distribution for our businesses. 
and to have tools like the Facebook Pixel, which hasn't always been around, to actually help us track those results so that we know where to spend more money and where to cut our ad spend, okay? I pity the fool who doesn't take the time to install their Pixel. Now, if you like this video, I will do more. I will break down in detail how I have made millions of dollars online with online advertising. Uh, but what I need from you for a couple of different reasons is for you to smash that like button if you like this. I need to know, did you like this style of video or do you want me to just go straight through the tactics and show you like everybody else, here's a small piece of code, copy and paste it, or do you like the metaphor with Mr. T or do you want something entirely different? And like I said, we're giving away one free advertising course. We're gonna pull one from our vault and we're gonna give it to somebody who likes this video, comments below, and you know, if you have friends that want to understand the Facebook pixel, please share it with them. The more you engage with this video, the more YouTube will spread the love and the more we can invest in making more free content for you on YouTube. I hope this demystifies the pixel. It's nothing to be afraid of. It's going to help you get results with your advertising. That's all for now. If you want more help with online advertising, if you want to learn how to get more lead sales and customers for your business without being overwhelmed with all the tech issues, come check out digitalnomad.com. We'll teach you how to start your own ad agency. We'll teach you how to start your own online course and scale your company to millions of dollars online. That's what we do. That's what we obsess about. We eat, sleep, breathe, and cry ad dollars, okay? And we'll make all the mistakes so you don't have to. Again, I'm Christian Martin, digitalnomad.com. I will talk to you on the next video.